Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with the Raspberry Pi 4. We haven't looked at this in a while, uh, but I was eager to play around with the new version of RetroPie and possibly do a video on it. And I was thinking I might want to get a case for my Pi 4 because I reviewed this right when it came out and there wasn't much out for it yet as far as cases were concerned. But now, of course, there are some stuff. So I picked up uh, this case the other day on Amazon called the Mazer Pi. It's not very expensive and it has all of the parts that you need uh, to get a proper Raspberry Pi installed and cooled. So I thought I would unbox it and just kind of put it together here and give you my thoughts on it. So it looks like it's very tightly packed here. So I'm just going to destroy the box, which drives some people crazy. And we'll see what's in here. So let's open up the plastic component here and see what the parts are. So we have uh, the case here. It looks like it's got some venting on it for its fan. And I think this actually comes with a fan and a heat sink for your Pi. So we have some screwdrivers here and we've got a little tiny fan that connects as well along with the heat sink. And it's always important, especially with the Pi 4, if you're going to be playing uh, retro games on it and stuff, you're going to be pushing it pretty hard. Um, so getting the cooling set on your Raspberry Pi will make some of the, some a bit of a difference actually, uh, especially if you start running things uh, for extended periods of time. So those heat sinks and that fan should help. So what I'm going to do here is get all my tools situated and we're going to put the case together and see how it all fits. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the case with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this case comes together. Now, what I noticed was that they did not actually give me any instructions with the case, but there are instructions, some limited ones, on the Amazon product listing. So be sure to check that out. You'll find uh, what screw goes where over there and I'll be following this as we put everything together but maybe this might be a good visual guide for everybody. Uh, now what they want you to do is place the Raspberry Pi, this is for the Pi 4 by the way, uh, into the, tr the bottom tray here. Uh, we're not going to screw anything in just yet because we have to get the rest of the system put together but once you get it aligned properly everything should snap into place just like it did right now. And our first step here is to install all of the little heat sinks that it came with. And I'm going to take them out of the package here. And there's a couple of them because there are a few different chips on the surface of the board. So we have, uh, I think, a big one and two smaller ones, or maybe uh, two other smaller ones in addition to two big ones. So let's take a look here. So we've got a big uh, square one, and then we've got uh, two little ones and a medium-sized one. So it should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, where all of these different heat sinks go. Uh, so we're going to take the big one out first, though, and put that one on the main processor here, which is silver. And what you have to do is just peel off the uh, little backing here to get the sticky stuff out. So let me do that real quick. There we go. And this is like a thermal adhesive that helps uh, heat transfer. So we're going to just put that on top of the main processor there. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, this one will go over this chip right here. So we'll do that and that'll keep that part cool. All right, so we'll put that on there and get that in there. All right, there we go. So now we've got two of those heat sinks attached. These should stick on for quite a while. Uh, now we've got the larger of the two little ones, and I think that one's going to go right on this chip right here. So we're going to do that. And again, it's good to get these installed you know, you know, with a good fan as well, just to get the heat out of this thing. These Raspberry Pis are getting more and more powerful, but they're not getting any bigger. <laughs> so as you put them in cases, it definitely uh, traps heat, um, you know, if you don't have a fan especially. And these heat sinks allow for an efficient way of getting that heat out of your case so, and away from those chips. And we're going to put uh, this one on here. This one's a little bit harder to get to because it's in a smaller spots. I'm just going to get it dropped in there and stuck to that chip. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, the next step is to get the fan attached. And what they recommended in the instructions was to have the fan uh, label face the CPU, which means that you've got to put it in like so. And what's going to happen here is the fan is going to go down on top of those screw holes there, just like this. And then what we're going to do is take out what they call the large head screws. Uh, which are in the screw packet here, uh, the shorter screws. I'm just going to get them out on the table. They're really tiny and small here. Um, so these little shorter screws are the ones, if I can get one in camera here, uh, those are the ones that you want to uh, screw the 
fan down with. So I'm going to start doing that real quick. We're going to start with the first one and then I'll do all four of them. And those just go into these uh, screw, screw holes here. And then when we're done, the fan will attach to the GPIO pins. And that's the one thing that they're not very clear about in the instructions. So we're going to take a look and uh, kind of guess at it based on uh, where they have them in the picture, even though the picture is super tiny. And let's just get these screws in here. All right, so we're going to connect the fan up. And I thought what I would do just to be safe was go to the Raspberry Pi website to check and make sure I plug things into the right pin. Uh, now you'll notice here, uh, these two pins are red and those correspond to uh, this pin and this pin here, the first two pins on the upper row on the left. And that means that we can plug the red cable here into either one of those. So I'm gonna plug it into this first one here. And then the black cable needs to go into the ground pin, uh, which is this black one here. So you don't wanna put these next to each other if you're putting uh, your first cable in here. You wanna skip a pin and put it in the third one from the left. And what I'll do here is just give you a side angle so you can see exactly what that looks like. And that should safely power our fan. Uh, the next step now is to put the case together and then screw it all together. Uh, so now I'm just going to use the long screws now to put it all together and then our case should be complete. And I will fire this up so that we can see if the fan is working. So once I get all of these screws in, uh, we'll plug it in and see if our Pi boots up. All right, we're ready to apply power to our Raspberry Pi. And let's cut back to the case here and plug it in. Uh, and there we go. I can hear the fan coming up. I can kind of feel the uh, air starting to flow. Not very loud. It's pretty quiet, so that's good. It makes a little bit of a, of a whirring sound, but I'm not going to hear this across the room. So it'll certainly be louder than a Raspberry Pi with no fan, uh, but it's not bad. I like where they put the, uh, the SD card uh, thing here. So obviously that's where the, the Pi locates it, but they have a pretty decent little lip there that I think should be pretty easy to access the card. So let's put the, a card in there real quick uh, just to see how it fits in there. So we'll take my card and just uh, insert it. Yeah, so that works because the card, as you can see, is still easily accessible. The one thing you gotta be careful about though is that there is some room to drop the card underneath that slot. And if you do that, you got to take the whole thing apart to get at the card. So just be careful when you insert it, um, but it should be pretty easy to get it on and off. Uh, good amount of venting on here. Like I said, it feels like it's moving a good amount of air for a tiny fan. Uh, all your ports are where they usually are, of course. So you've got your USB-C, the two HDMIs, the audio output, your USB ports, and your uh, Ethernet are there. And then you still have access to the uh, GPIO pins here at the top. So pretty nice little case here. Pretty nice, so stay tuned. We're gonna be doing a little bit more with the Pi. Uh, we're actually in the process of getting ready to shoot a review on these new controllers from 8-Bit Do, and I wanted to see how they worked with the Pi. Uh, so we will be having some Pi videos coming up soon, maybe something on RetroPi also, now that the Raspberry Pi 4 version is out. Uh, so lots more to see here, stay tuned. Nice little case here for the money. Feels a little bit loose, but I think if I tightened it up a little bit tighter, it might be better. But uh, again, for the money, I'm not complaining. Heat sinks, fan, and a case, uh, pretty inexpensive out the door. I can recommend this one. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.